Hey folks, I'm Tom Basso and welcome to Look Back where we take a look at reviews that I did one year, five years, and ten years ago and I tell you what I think about them now. So let's start with games I reviewed last year. First of all, let's take a look at Solaris. This is a game from uh, Queen Games in which you were like using energy to, you're trying to get a bunch of energy so you're moving it from here to here to here. Oh, talk about the game where move something from here to here, do this to move it from here to here, move it from here to here and get this. Did not like it at all. Looks pretty, but that's it. Not looking pretty is Destroy BCN, which is a monster game in which you use dice and move them along and make attacks and things. Had some interesting concepts, really bad looking game though, and it didn't pan out. Wasn't a very fun game in the long run. Cobra Paul, this is a game where you roll two dice, grab the tile that matches them. That's it. Nice components, but there's not really much of a game there. Follow, this is a game where you're trying to get followers go throughout history. Interesting idea. I like the artwork. The game itself isn't awful, but it's not great either. It's just pretty lucky running around and there's a little bit too much take that in it for me. A lot of sixes a year ago. Dr. Beaker, this is a kid's game, like Dr. Eureka and stuff, and where you're moving things around in a beaker and trying to get them. It's kind of a little bit of a logic game, but it takes out the silly fun that's in a lot of these logic games, uh, like Dr. Eureka has that silly, you know, pour something from beaker to beaker, and instead just kind of keeps the logic there, and the device doesn't work as well as it should. So it's okay, it's just not fantastic. Kepler 3042 is a big space game. I, I did this one originally. It was down reprinted by Renegade this year, I think. I like the game. It's fine to go out and explore and do things, but it doesn't feel like you have enough time to do a lot in the game. And there's a tech tree, and it also feels very straight jackish -y. Do these very specific things. It felt like there wasn't enough game for all the stuff that's in the box. Shifty-Eyed Spies. It's one of these kind of games where you're looking at people and trying to figure out who the spy is and give secret signals and things. So if you like that, you will like this. Great components. Fiery Dragons, a little good kid memory game. The Wizard Always Wins. This is from a newer company the, a year ago, the same people who made the Shifty-Eyed Spies. This game is silly as all get out. You're basically playing cards and doing different things and trying to pull tokens from your bag. Um, if you pull the token there that you win, you win the game. But you need to... You, you want to kind of upgrade first to be able to pull more tokens from your bag, have more chances to win. So you can't just win on turn one, but you can try to push your luck a little bit earlier. It's silly, great components, and it feels different than many other games. Really bad art. This is a game where you only have like six seconds to draw something, and then you put them in the middle, and everyone has to guess who drew what, matching what clues. Hilarious fun. Leaders of Euphoria. This is a basically good cop, bad cop put into Jimmy Stegmaier's Euphoria universe. I don't think that was necessary. It has big giant plastic guns. But the whole good cop, bad cop thing actually works a little better here because of the third faction they included. Although this one never did seem to get a lot of buzz. Caverna Cave vs. Cave. This is a two-player version of Caverna. Very inferior to Caverna in my opinion. It's okay. Um, I don't know that I'd played over at Grickwall Creatures Great and Small or Lahav Inland Port, the other two two-player games, but Sam and Z liked it more. Roller Coaster Challenge. This is a put puzzles together, you know, uh, like, you know, Car Rush uh, or Rush Hour, I'm sorry, and games like that. But here you're building an actual roller coaster and seeing if the roller coaster goes down it. Awesome. And then Bitter Up. And very underrated game, very many, very few people talk about it, but this is the board, the board game version of your bluffing, and they took a lot of the aspects of that and just made it so much fun. Highly recommend it. Five years ago, I took a look at Dungeon Venture, which is everything wrong with fantasy board games. The most generic of genericness. Bleh. Um, don't, don't, don't look it up. Flux the board game. And it's Flux, the board game. Actually, I like Flux, the board game, better than Flux, the card game. You know, you're moving boards and doing different things to win. I don't know how well this one ever took off, but I thought it was okay. Uh, Spirium. Spirium's actually a pretty neat game in which you're placing things between cards to try to control them. It has a feel of a bigger game condensed in a smaller box. Fish Cook. This is from James Ernest. It's a game in which you are trying to get fish and cook them. It's uh, a little bit of an economic game. It's a heavier game than it looks which I think is pretty cool. Tapple. This is a party game which we still play today where you have this device and you're pressing a letter down, you know, like name a movie. Uh, or name a, you know, name an adventure movie and I might say uh, Indiana Jones and I'll press down I, then I hand it to you and you, you got to press down a different letter. But if you wait too long before you press down a letter, the thing pops and you're out. Simple game, but it works great. 
Uh, Palaces of Carrera. That I only played this one because it was nominated for Spiel des Jahres, but I really enjoyed this one, or you build up the things. I remember we struggled to play through it because I couldn't find an English version, so I did some paste-ups and stuff. Uh, but I think it has been recently reprinted. Not sure, but there you go. Uh, Trains and Stations. This is a, a game from Eric Lang with uh, using like the little dice from WizKids, and it's a game about moving different goods across America by putting little trains down as dice. It's a little smaller than the game should be, and I don't play it as much as I used to, which is why the rating has dropped some, but it's, I still thought it was a neat idea. I'd like to see this one redone as a slightly bigger game. Space Cadets Dice Duel. Now, this seems like a pretty big drop. Did I, did I drop the game that much? No, I still think it's a fine game. It's just that Captain Sonar beat this game in every possible way. Captain Sonar is like one of my favorite games ever. This one is so similar that, you know, I dropped them down. But I still like playing Space Cadets Dice Duel. And Take It to the Limit. Take It to the Limit is a great uh, game. And it's basically one of those games a million people could play where you draw a tile, call it out. Everyone puts that tile on their board and you're trying to put them to match rows and columns. If you've never tried it, it's just, it's very bingo-ish, I guess, in a sense. But it feels really cool. Ten years ago, I took a look at In Limbo, which is I believe now called Diablo. Um, just trying to play the right cards at the right time, push your luck, but now nah, it was just not a very good game. Limits. Not a game I want to play all the time, but just trying to outguess things. What's interesting to me is this is a little card game from Rosenberg, Uwe Rosenberg. This was before he turned his corner and started doing all the Agricola stuff that people love today. And then Hop to It, which is a little bit of a kid's memory style game uh, from the Player Entertainment line. They did a lot of great games in that line. Check them out. Those are the reviews I did a year, five years, and ten years ago. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Look Back on the Dice Tower. Yeah.